So what would it look like if we could expand on these intuitions and elevate things into a more scientific approach to sentencing? In some cases, this is already happening. So take the sentencing of sex offenders. Some years ago, researchers asked psychiatrists and parole board members how likely specific sex offenders were to relapse when they were let out of prison. So both groups, the psychiatrists and the parole board members, had lots of experience with these particular sex offenders. So predicting who was getting on the right road and who was going to be coming back to prison seemed pretty straightforward. But surprisingly, these expert guesses showed almost no correlation with the actual outcomes. The experts had only slightly better accuracy at predicting than coin flippers. So this astounded the legal community. So the researchers tried something a little more like how life insurance companies do things. Using statistics, the researchers gathered a huge cloud of data from 23,000 sex offenders who had been released. They looked at whether the offender had unstable employment, had been sexually abused as a child, was addicted to drugs, showed remorse, had deviant sexual interests, and on and on and on. The researchers then tracked them for five years after release to see who wound up back in prison. And at the end of the study, they computed which factors best explained the reoffense rates. And from this, they were able to build statistical models, also called actuarial tables, to use in sentencing. So when researchers compared the predictive power of the actuarial approach with that of the psychiatrists and parole boards, there was no contest. It turns out, perhaps not surprisingly, that numbers beat intuition. So in courtrooms across the nation, these actuarial tests are now used in pre-sentencing to dial the length of prison terms. Not everyone is getting exactly the same length of sentencing. As a side note, the way to make a system like this immune to government abuse is to make the data and equations that compose the sentencing guidelines transparent and available online for anyone to verify. Now, I need to make it clear that we're never going to know with certainty what someone's going to do when they get released from prison because real life is complicated and crime often depends on the context that someone finds themselves in. And an approach like this offers individualized tailoring in place of the blunt guidelines that the legal system typically employs, where everyone gets the same sentence. And beyond customized sentencing, a forward-thinking legal system informed by scientific insights is going to allow us to stop treating prison as the one-size-fits-all solution. Now, to be clear, I'm not opposed to incarceration. It has several purposes, including removing dangerous people from the streets, and just the prospect of going to jail deters some amount of would-be crimes. But deterrence only works for certain brains in the population. I mentioned that prisons have become our de facto mental health care institutions, and inflicting punishment on the mentally ill usually has little to no influence on their future behavior. So an encouraging trend is the establishment of mental health courts around the nation. These are specialized courts where you have judges and juries with expertise in mental illness. And people with mental illness can be helped while being confined in a tailored environment. There are many cities that are moving to this sort of specialized court system for reasons of justice and cost effectiveness and general efficacy. And similarly, there are lots of jurisdictions that are opening specialized drug courts and developing alternative sentences. They've realized that prisons are not that useful for solving addictions as compared to, let's say, a meaningful drug rehabilitation program. And this is the other big benefit of a forward-looking legal system, is the ability to parlay biological understanding into customized rehab. Viewing criminal behavior the way that we understand other medical conditions like epilepsy or schizophrenia or depression, conditions that now allow the seeking and giving of help. And so we can seek rehabilitative strategies for people in all sorts of circumstances instead of imagining that incarceration is the optimal solution. 